First it was air conditioning, now it's roads. Turns out women aren't cycling because roads are sexist and are built by men. Or something. Helen Pidd of The Guardian has written a very important article about sexism and cycling. She claims that women shun cycling because of safety, not helmet hair. Roads designed by men are killing women and stop millions from cycling. Interesting. Let's see what she's got to say. It will come as little surprise to anyone who cycles that twice as many men as women ride their bikes at least once a week, according to research from Sustrans, the cycling and walking charity. Almost three quarters of women living in seven major UK cities never cycle for local journeys, the study found. Despite this, over two thirds said their hometown would be a better place if more people pedalled. Some 76% of women who already cycled or wanted to start said segregated lanes would help them to cycle more. So women are saying that more people should cycle, but more women aren't cycling. Sounds a bit lazy and hypocritical to me, and maybe they hate the environment as well. Hmm. As a woman who cycles, I'm often asked why so few others follow suit. Is it because of helmet hair or the bottom amplifying effects of lycra? There's no doubt that women generally feel more pressure to look presentable than men. And although I'm rarely troubled by saddle sores, I find the logistics of cycling to work a right pain in the bum. The skanky showers, the outfit changes, the struggle to find somewhere discreet to plug in a hairdryer. So women are more likely to need hairdryers in women's works toilets? That sounds like a pretty sexist assumption to me, Mrs. Pidd. Women do seem to be more vulnerable, perhaps because they are often more reluctant to own the lane, and so end up in the gutter. 10 out of 13 cyclists killed in London in 2009 were women, and 8 of them were killed by left-turning HGVs, according to the campaign group Cycling UK. No, Helen Pidd thinks it's because of sexist road planners. Xavier Bryce at Sustrans believes city planners are to blame. 51% of the UK population is female, yet most of our cities are failing to design roads and streets for women to cycle, he says. It cannot help that women remain underrepresented among the transport planners and engineers who design our streets, and most council leaders who decide how to spend the transport budget are men. I don't get it. What does gender have anything to do with this? How can roads be sexist? How can roads be designed to be friendlier towards women. Do we start using pink tarmac? What's she talking about? And by the way, this idea that not that many women cycle, nonsense. I went to Cambridge recently and uh, you could barely drive. There's that many women steering and weaving in and out of roads everywhere. There's plenty of female cyclists. And what, bigger cycling lanes? Are we meant to be talking about that? Are we going to widen the cycling lanes and make the roads you know, thinner for cars? Or do we have to engage in a huge infrastructure project across the UK that would cost tens of billions, if not more, to widen all the roads? If women have a problem cycling on roads, then frankly, it's their problem. It's not road planners. Recently, we were told that cyclists were just too white, and now we're being told by The Guardian that cyclists are just too male. It's sickening, isn't it? When Guardianistas tell us that women are too scared to cycle on roads because they're designed by men, aren't they just belittling women, treating them like children? Why do they treat women and ethnic minorities like kids who need pampering and looking after constantly throughout their whole adult lives. If you want to cycle, cycle. If women want to cycle, go out and do it. But you know what? If women don't want to cycle, go out and take a cab. It's no skin off my back. The left consistently demands equity in everything from cycling to employment. We live in a free society, sort of. It's time to stop telling women to be outraged, minorities to be offended, and to stop telling men to stop enjoying things that they enjoy. If you like that and want to see more, remember to like and subscribe and download the new Rebel app from the Apple App Store and the Google Play Store.